During this video, I will focus on airline profit and mainly looking at the most important cost for airlines. This is the last on the series that we have been looking on the past two videos about financial statistical terms. The way we define profit for an airline is all the revenue generated minus all the cost. And basically the airline will have profit when revenue is higher than cost. When we could look at revenue, there are two main items. One is all the revenue generated by selling tickets, which is the main activity of the airline. But with the time has become more and more important, another item which is called ancillary revenue. What is ancillary revenue? All the revenue generated on top of airline ticket. This is a main concept developed by low-cost airlines and some example of ancillary revenue could be a foot on board, could be the money they collect by charging you for checking your luggage, or could be uh, duty-free on board, and much more. We will see in uh, airline marketing chapter, but this ancillary revenue could be up to 20-25% for some low-cost airlines. So it's a very, very important. Airline. Another important ingredient to, for airlines to make profit is cost. I mean, they should maximize revenue and they should minimize cost. So what are the most important items for cost? Well, those are fuel and labor cost. These two main items, labor and fuel, are gonna change depending on the country you are, depending also on the fuel price, oil price. But if we look at 2008, with an oil price of 90 US dollar per barrel, then labor and fuel cost, on average, for the whole industry, accounted for more than 50%. Being fuel the largest cost with 32% and been followed by labor with 20%. Sorry. If we look at labor cost, in this case for 2012, for not the whole industry, but different airlines, we see that there is a big difference. I mean, we have one airline called Wizzair here, which has like a 6.5% of labor cost, and we have SAS Scandinavian Airlines group, which goes up to 32%. So we have this huge difference. If we look at a bit more into detail, the next airline is Boeing. The third one is Ryanair. And do you know what those airlines are? Yes, you know. All those tend to be low cost carriers. And on the other end, we have SAS, we have Iberia, we have Air France, and so on. So those on the other end, are full service carriers. So, on general, full service carriers tend to have much higher cost compared to low cost carriers. If we look at the other important major cost, oil, uh, and we look at the oil prices of the last 50, 60 years, we can see that there are big differences. I mean, in the 50s, the oil price was quite a standard. It was like around $20. Then in the late 70s, go up to 70, 80 and went down. And here is an important point I want to highlight is September 11, 2001. After September 11, basically oil went up, up to 100 uh, US dollars per barrel. And it has been since then until recently with levels above 100 or around uh, dollars. So if we look at, we make a comparison before September 11 and after September 11, what was the total cost of fuel for airlines? We see that there is a big difference. Basically, on 2001, we had 14% as the uh, percentage of fuel cost versus 32% in 2008. So we can see that this big jump in fuel prices 
have uh, increased dramatically the percentage of fuel cost for airlines. For you to have an idea, uh, this before September 11, we were talking about 30 US dollars per barrel, and in 2008, we are talking about 90 US dollars per barrel. To, for you to have an If we look at the period 2013, 2014, we are about 100 US dollars. However, uh, after the summer of 2014, price of oil started to go down until uh, 40, 50 US dollars per barrel. I just checked at the time of recording this video in March 2015, and the price was 54. So we see that the oil price is very changing up and down. To try to minimize these fluctuations, airlines do something which is called fuel hedging. So what, what fuel hedging does basically is to secure le certain level of fuel prices for the future. So let's say in September, I try to uh, predict or I try to fix the fuel prices for the following year. It has positive effect when the price goes up, but also could have negative effect when the price goes down, as it is the actual situation. So fuel hedging has saved a lot of money uh, to airlines, but in some cases, as recently, it could uh, create an extra cost for airlines. So it's something to be done very carefully. So as a summary, we see that the profit is the difference between revenue and cost, and that the most important items of cost are labor and fuel. So if we manage to reduce those and we manage to increase revenue, uh, will be the way to be profitable. Thank you very much.